Okay, so we've got the uh, the parallax scrolling background uh, working okay. One thing I thought actually would be useful to point out is explain a little bit more about how this if or oh, if else statement works. So again, it's inside the uh, scroll city function, which is being so this whole block here from function to the end keyword is it's being run 30 times per second, and then here. The way this if statement, or the way an if statement works in any programming language, is we say if something's true, and there's the something, so this is usually called a condition. Here the condition is that um, we're checking if the X position of whichever image self happens to be, whether it's city 1, city 2, 3 or 4, uh, whichever one of those it is, and whatever the X position is currently, if that is less, well, if it's true that that is less than this position, negative 477, so way off the left-hand side of the stage, if that's true, and only if it's true, then uh, we're going to run this line here, which resets its X position back to 480, so over on the right-hand side of the screen. Again, this has to be true for this line to run, so it's a bit like a gate, or how we make a decision on the computer. It's uh, saying, if this is true, do this, else. So, in other words, if this is false, which is most of the time, because most of the time its exposition is not uh, less than this uh, number here, then, if that's not true, then just keep running this line here. So, most of the time, this is the line that's been run over and over and over, which is the one that actually moves it to the left. Okay, but that's enough on the, um, the city, the background. So, what I'm going to do is just um, put in a comment here say that this is the background. Come down and then make a new area. And um, this is going to be the jet. So okay, we're going to have a, a variable and call it jet local jet equals display because we want to display something dot new image. Okay and here's where we're going to load in the jet graphics. So just quickly on that um, let me just bring up the folder. Um, sorry, let's get this back to where we were. Uh, so side scroller, and in here we've got. Uh, eventually, we're using this one, Jet, which is um, actually what's um, like an animated sprite. So for this one, we're going to be just using this static image called Red Jet. And um, so let's just um, take a look. Actually, if we um, if we have a look, here's the uh, the finished one. You'll notice the back, the jet trail and the jet, there's just a really slight animation there on the jet trail of the uh, the colours, the contrail there, sort of uh, changing colour. So that's actually four images cycling over and over. Just to begin with, we're just going to use one image. So um, in the folder, there's also this one called Red, Red Jet. So that's just a static, it doesn't have the animation. So we'll use it just to start with, and then we'll switch it over. Okay, so Red jet is the name of the graphic dot png and let's just see if we're going to get something on the screen so go back to our our project that we're working on so here and you can see underneath this carry up sort of this bar up here which we'll get rid of soon uh, is this this jet here so we can't really see it it's not a good spot for it so let's change its x and y properties and um, so I'll just make a bit more room Okay, jet.x, let's just try 100, so it'll be 100 pixels in from the left hand side, and jet.y equals, try the same. Okay, so, whoops, just meant to save that. And here we go, we've got uh, the jet just sitting there, so that's 100 pixels in from the left, that was the x coordinate, and then 100 pixels down from the top. One thing with the y axis on the computer is that the zero point on the y-axis. So generally, like when you learn maths, on the number plane, zero on the y-axis is down the bottom. Just on the computer, just no, and this is not just corona, it's just in general. Zero is measured from the top. So here this is y zero, y one hundred uh, is here. And then on an iPhone three, y three twenty is down here. So it, it's reversed. You make a bigger y value and it will actually push the uh, whatever image you're talking about down on the screen. So you get used to it pretty soon. Uh, okay, so we've got it there, but it's not. It just sits there. It doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do now is actually set up a function um, so that it responds to um, to our the movement. 
we're going to uh, put on it. So the first thing we actually want to do is apply gravity, and to do that, we're going to use the uh, the built-in physics engine in Corona. If we're going to use the physics engine, we need to um, what's called um, include it or require it. So um, let's put in another comment. So it requires. Um, if you've never seen a comment before, just know that the bit with the two dashes won't be read by uh, the phone. Uh, it's just a, a note or a, a comment for humans to read, so uh, that's what the two dashes does. And what we need to do here is say we're going to create a variable just called physics, and then say we'll set it equal to require, so we'll say require physics, and that will allow us to use the built-in physics engine. Um, I think you just have to require it. I think it just keeps down the app size, the eventual app size. Basically, if um, if you don't include it, it won't include it in your app, so it'll just just keeps the file size smaller. Here we're just saying um, physics start, which will just start the physics engine. Okay, so what you can then do is say, well, any graphic we've added, we can then add it to the physics engine. Okay, so to do that, um, we say physics dot add body so body I mean we're just adding a graphic really uh, it's going to be jet that's the name of the variable we created and then um, here we need to say whether it's static or dynamic uh, we'll make it dynamic which means it'll move around we'll, it'll have gravity applied to it and then we've got a bit of setup to do here so I'll just type it out so we need to say we'll specify density um, I'm just going to set these, and then quickly we'll go through them. A lot of these don't apply to our game here, but uh, to other games, uh, they're very important. Density, like it sounds, it's like how heavy is the object. Bounce is, well, how bouncy is it, if it's going to bounce off things. Um, we don't have bouncing in this game. Friction is, uh, like how much does it stick to things? I mean, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, and again, a lot of them, I mean, they don't really apply to this game. There's lots of info out there. Radius is pretty important for our one, like radius is like half the radius, so half the jet size, it's about 24 pixels or so, so that is an important one when it's going to come to collisions for us. Okay, so we've added the body, so let's just tr save this, and we'll just try it. Okay, so there's something going on, because it should be having gravity applied to it and dropping. Okay, so... um. Here on line 60, there's something going on. Okay, it doesn't like something on uh, this line here. Um, let me see. Okay, and I've put um, actually what it was saying the um, compile error was actually pretty good. It said, uh, attempt to perform arithmetic on global density. So, okay, what's called density? Um, so we look here, and this one's density, and here it's got a minus, should be a equals. So let's um, try that. And it's a good sign, because we can't see the jet, which means gravity should have been applied, and it's just dropped off the screen. So we'll restart it, and there we go. So we've got the physics engine up and running on that jet. Um, okay, so I think we'll leave that video there and in the next one we'll look at how to apply like so when we touch the screen um, we're going to apply a force and make the jet actually move upwards